It's another beautiful Saturday afternoon here on the campus of St. John Fisher College for another Empire A matchup this week. It'll be Fisher hosting the Norwich University Cadets. And, I am here, and uh, I'm Seth Horns alongside here with John Zinni for yet another broadcast. Uh, this is the uh, Fisher Broadcasting Network in accordance with the Cardinal Television, and, you can, and you're hearing this game right now live on Teamline.cc. Cardinal Television's coverage of this game has been made possible by Dean Dave Pate and the St. John Fisher College School of Arts and Sciences. And to go on back, the, to go on from last week against the game against Brockport, John, we saw the Fisher really just have a beautiful game, and John has more of that now. The St. John Fisher College Cardinal football team coming off a tough loss last week to Hartwick would take on area rival Brockport at Grownie Stadium, which turned out to be a rainy Grownie Stadium on this day. So rainy, in fact, that our camera person actually had to wipe off the lens to get this shot of Rob Kramer dropping back, looking downfield, and finding the fellow Oneida native on a 28-yard strike for a touchdown would be the first of a couple on the day for Jimmy Smith in one of the best days of his career. And out of the Fisher defense, fourth and short, deep in Fisher territory, it's Jake DeCola, the Brockport quarterback, looking for his receiver but overthrows him. Not an uncommon trend on the day. He overthrew quite a few of his receivers to the point where he got replaced later in the game. Now Fisher pinned back in their own end. It's Rob Kramer finds Jimmy Smith from his own three yard line. And look at Jimmy go across the 30, the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and he's in pay dirt, folks. That's number two on the day for the, total, for the amount of 97 yards. Now it's Brockport back to the offense. They're calling my run, but he throws instead, and guess who's there? Steve Stepnick, the All-American, to make yet another interception. He had two on the day, and that would stop that Brockport drive. Now Kramer on the play-action pass. He'll look downfield. Guess who it is, folks? It's number two, Jimmy Smith catches it, makes one man look silly and gets into the end zone for a touchdown, three on the day. And he would have quite an impressive total, 170, excuse me, 187 yards total on the day, three touchdown passes. Rob Kramer would have finished the day 12 of 17 for 312 yards. All three of his touchdown passes were to Jimmy Smith and all three of Jimmy Smith's receptions were touchdown passes. He averaged 62.3 yards a catch, so obviously a great day for Jimmy. Ryan Hansen at 81 yards on 20 carries, including one touchdown. And on the defensive side of the ball, Steve Stepnick had eight tackles, including two interceptions. And Derek Melnick had five tackles and had Fisher's lone sack. Now to Brockport, Jake Dercola went six of 15 for 67 yards and three interceptions. He eventually got pulled towards the end of the game. Matt McCormick, the running back, had 12 rushes for 51 yards. Matt Newman, only two catches for 18 yards. On the defensive side of the ball, Dale Buck had a big day. The captain with 13 tackles, two for a loss and one sack. And another big boy up front, Mike Burgess, had six tackles and one sack. The final score, St. John Fisher wins 45-7 over area rival Brockport and bounced back nicely after a tough Hartwick loss. And what a tough loss that was to Hartwick. But uh, St. John Fisher did well to recover and bounce back nicely with a 45-7 win over Brockport. Both the defense and the offense uh, played outstanding in that game and a dominating, a dominating performance over an area rival. Uh, really the first time that Fisher has beat uh, Brockport in that way. I mean, they beat them before the last few years, but it's been in close uh, down-to-the-wire games. Uh, this year, really, Fisher took over, Seth. And again, I mean, talking about the Brockport in that game, it was the one. There's one really huge key factor for that offense, and what was that? You know, I it had to be it had to be Jimmy Smith 
You know, Rob, Rob Kramer and Jimmy Smith, the Oneida connection, we talked about it all year long. They have such a good rapport on, on and off the field, it seems that, uh, you know, they just – Kramer finds Jimmy Smith so easily, he seems to always lay it in right over his shoulder uh, when it passes down the field, and they just – have a great connection as a quarterback wide receiver as that relationship progresses throughout the year. And John, I mean, I know we were talking about this not a connection, and the fact that is, um, this Brockport game was the only time we saw that. The Buff State game, Smith missed the Kings College season opener, then proceeded to come into the Buff State game, and the first pass he got, I believe, went for a touchdown. So we've been sitting, we're still seeing a lot of great things from Jimmy Smith and Rob Kramer. And, and on that day, uh, Jimmy Smith was on pace to score four touchdowns. He had two touchdowns in the first half alone, and then uh, with that injured leg that he had, that leg injury, he actually sat out the rest of that second half, considering that the game was already at hand pretty much for Fisher. So, uh, you know, Jimmy Smith's been able to put up some big numbers and really be a deep threat down the field for this Fisher Cardinal offense. He really has, not I mean, going back to that, take into consideration that the last couple guys to score three receiving touchdowns in the game was Jeff Holbrook and Noah Fehrenbach. And I got to say, for Jimmy Smith, it's got to be some pretty nice company to be with there. And uh, John, to, to kind of move forward, talking about this week's game, I know the I, I, we've heard from Norwich that they're going to be a little bit of a quarterback mix-up. Uh, um, Jean Jolais, their starting quarterback, was injured last week in Ithaca, and Chris Gilding was the quarterback who stepped in for that Ithaca loss. But he cannot make it. He cannot play today because of a because uh, of a personal issue that rose up. So Andy Holtz, a guy who's only played in two games so far this year, will be at the helm for Norwich College. And John, it, thinking uh, think about that. I mean, we're talking about a team that's got a couple losses already this season. Having to use your third quarterback in the season, what's that really going to be a challenge for the uh, offense? It, it's going to be tough. I mean, it, it would have been tough if the first and or second string quarterback was in there, but to bring in your third string kid. You know, in a tough situation, it's a hostile environment. A lot of fans here week in and week out at Groundy Stadium. They're loud and supportive usually, not to mention you're playing one of the best teams in the nation, you know, the eighth-ranked team, uh, usually known for their offense, but their defense has played very well. Only allowed seven points last year. Uh, the first defense actually did not allow a single point, and that, that one touchdown that the Brockport did score uh, was in the fourth quarter against, you know, against some of the second stringers and third stringers. So really it was a fantastic defensive performance last week led by uh, Steve Stepnick who had two interceptions, 16 career interceptions for him. He leads all time here at St. John Fisher. And uh, he, is, he is a big key for this defense. And, uh, and Andy Holtz, you know, the third string quarterback, is going to have his work cut off for him when he's got guys like Stepnick and Driscoll and the like in the, in the defensive secondary making his day all the more difficult. In those two games that Holtz played, he's 12 of 37, passing for 123 yards, two picks. Hopefully he, ho he was going to hope that he won't throw another pick to either Stepnick or even uh, Driscoll or Maranta, especially for Driscoll, who almost had an opportunity last week for an interception, but fell just a little bit short coming back from his ACL injury he picked up before the season started. And we'll, see, and we'll have to see what he comes in. Um, another player that is going to be out this on the other side for the Cardinals is, of course, Mike Weimer, the center for the team. What can you tell us a little bit more about that, John? Oh, he suffered a knee injury against Hartwick. Uh, you know, uh, the outlook was quite bleak after that happened. Really thought there was some serious damage. A few days later, he woke up and it could straighten his leg. Uh, he was very surprised. He, could, he straightened his leg, had a pretty good range of motion. So it's going to be up in the air whether he can get back. Obviously, I don't think he's going to get back this week. And playing in that spot, and an all-important center spot on the offensive line will be the senior, Justin Wood, from Dryden. Uh, a great player in his own right. A uh, lot, of, lot of depth at the offensive line. Uh, a lot of big boys on this team. Um, but, you know, I think Justin Wood filled in nicely last week and is looking to do the same this week. And again, I mean, as you mentioned, Wood is a good player in his own right. And the fact that, you know, the, the Cardinals looks like as if they're easily just going to say, okay, we're not going to rush Weimer because, I mean, he was, after that Hartwick loss, he, he was wearing a, a knee brace around campus. Doesn't seem to be much of an issue. But it is good that the Cardinals do have depth in that offensive line to make sure that they can just keep playing Wood. Again, he had a stellar, he played stellar against Brockport last week who had some pretty good guys up in that uh, defensive front there to try to challenge Kramer and didn't really have much. <laughs> and the fact that uh, we're, we're going to take a little time out here for a commercial break, we'll be back shortly.
The odds of a child being in a Broadway show are 1 in 11,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit autismspeaks.org. Listen, I know you're upset, but it was just one date. And dating's like the stock market. Uh, there's uh, ups and, and downs and, and ups. And so always by love. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. All right, welcome back to the uh, St. John Fisher for, uh, the Fisher uh, Broadcasting Network's coverage here of the Cardinals versus the Norwich Cadets. And, John, talking about, talking about last year's matchup, which, again, was another win for uh, Fisher, what can you really tell us about that? Well, last year Fisher was victorious 32 to nothing over Norwich, a pretty uh, stellar performance by Fisher uh, in Norwich. Uh, took control of the game early, led at the half 20 to nothing. Rob Kramer having a typical Rob Kramer day, 15 to 22 for 214 yards and two touchdowns. He had 416 total yards of offense on the day, and James Real had a big day as well. Uh, last year, an accompaniment with Rock Robinson had 14 carries for 126 yards, so a very efficient day. And for Norwich, Marcus Adames was 27 to 40 for 192 yards in that loss and he of course is no longer here and Andy Holtz will take over the helm this year. Uh, difference between this year and last year, Norwich, the Cadets have uh, changed their offense. They've committed to a no huddle shotgun spread offense and primarily that is what they will run their offensive set out of. Almost 100% of their plays are from the shotgun. They like to run, excuse me, like to run a lot of three-step drop, quick hitting passes. Uh, occasionally on third and long situations they will go five-step but primarily you'll see the quick uh, third, three step slants, bubble screens, that type of thing. And they also like to run the inside zone handoff. So the zone block up front, just kind of try to push flow uh, one way or the other and let the running backs find a hole and cut it up field. Well, again, we're going to be seeing a lot of, uh, we're going to see Holtz kind of have a little more, a little of a baptism by fire with that. And, we're, and again, you're going to be talking about the running backs. We're talking about Darnell Jackson, who's one of their top offensive players, 94 carries for 527 yards. He's going to hope they have a decent day, especially against a solid Fisher defense. As we're about ready for the kickoff here, Ricky Tater, the punter, will be kicking away. He's going to be going to Dan Wild and Darnell Jackson. A little bit of a low flying kick. It is caught by Jackson at the 10. Jackson trying to find some holes, and he's wrapped up immediately at the 28 by Josiah Smith, backup wide receiver. And that is where we will see Holtz. Again, he's only played in two games this year. It's kind of an interesting situation with the, with the cadets. They didn't really have an idea of who their starting quarterback was going to be, so they alternate three quarterbacks. Jean Jolet, who is injured. Chris Gilling, who has a pr uh, personal commitment today and cannot play today. And, of course, Andy Holtz, who's only played in two games. Holtz They're going, of course, from that uh -oh, shotgun spread offense that John was talking about, two wide receivers, Viva Lindsay and Flanagan. And the drop back, Holtz throws, and it's a pass incomplete intended for E.J. Flanagan, knocked away by Scott by, the, yeah, there, by Scott Moranto. Giving defense to the wide receiver there, number six. And we'll go second and 10 from the 28. We're about 10 seconds into this matchup. Again, from the shotgun. Drop him back, three-step drop, throws, and it's knocked down by number 96 on that defense, Dan Pollock. You know, you're, you know you're probably off to a bad start when your first two pass attempts touch more Fisher hands than it does uh, your own wide receivers. On first down, Scott Moranto jumped the pattern, got a hand in there before Flanagan could catch it. 
And on second down, Dan Pollock off the right edge uh, made himself big and knocked that ball down. And like I said, they tried two short completions there. A three-step drop kind of look as Holtz, the big 6'5 quarterback, is trying to get something going here early for the cadets. Three wide receiver, Flanagan goes in motion to the far side. A handoff there to number 40, Marziotti, and he gets maybe a couple yards. He might have gotten to the 30, and that'll bring up a fourth and about eight from the 30. So pretty much what we expected from this Norwich offense, two short three-step drop passes and an inside zone handoff as the offensive line zone towards the left far side of the field, uh, trying to allow number 40 to cut it upfield, their running back, Kyle Mazzer, excuse me, Marziotti, uh, but nothing was doing there. It'll be fourth and 10 as Norwich has yet to gain a yard on offense. We're gonna see Ryan Kelly take the punt. He had to pick that one right off the ground. A uh, whistle is blowing. That play oh. dead. Oh, and because it touched the, the ball touched the ground, Kelly, Ryan Kelly picked the ball right off the ground. They're going to mark it dead at about the 15. And that's where Rob Kramer in that offense and Jimmy Smith was out there to return a kick. He's going to be probably staying on the field and be playing receiver. Remember, he had a career day, three receptions for 187 yards, three touchdowns. Those three touchdowns tied a school record for most re touchdown receptions in a game. A disaster on special teams really puts his cadet defense in a tough spot as uh, Kramer and the offense is going to go right after it here in shotgun on first down. Let's see, there they go. Shotgun, Kramer rolls to the near side. Throw, the pass is a little short, intended for Tim Marion at about the eight. And that'll bring up a second and 10. That was a quick uh, sprint roll out there. Kramer got the shotgun snap, rolled right to his left. Uh, Marion was split out on the left side, did a little comeback pattern, but unfortunately Kramer one-hopped it to Marion, and it'll bring up second down. Second down again, they're going from the shotgun position, reel to the left of Kramer, Hansen to the right of him. Two wide receivers, it's Smith and Marion to the near side. He's gonna hand this off to Hanson, and Hanson busts his way up for about five yards to the 10 yard line. And this should bring down a third and five for the Cardinals. And it appears to be a player down on the field for the Cadets. And he seems to be in some discomfort now at about the 12 yard line. Trying to see what number the player is. This is, hopefully it won't be Hopefully it won't be one of the crucial players up front there. Trainers coming out there for the cadets. Looks like the uh, cadets are going to switch a couple players out maybe. No, they're not. Still do not know the player is. He's not really moving that much, so we can only hope to guess what is ailing him at this moment. So Fisher has a third and five situation here now at about the 10-yard line as Hansen picked up pretty good yardage on second down, got through the interior of that line, uh, cut it back up the middle, and was brought down about the 10. As uh, we still have a stoppage in play here. Looks like the trainer is trying to, is putting his hand on the knee. I, I mean, again, we are only guessing at what's ailing him. He's still down on the ground. It appears to be a left knee injury from what they're administering right now. And it looks like they're going to make almost the wholesale defensive switch here. Looks like actually they sent out oh, four players. Looks like they actually re receive them. I, I'm, wait a minute, John, I'm as shocked as you are on that <laughs> one. Looks like as if they were making a drastic defensive change, especially up front. They're going to be carrying him off the field. He still cannot get a number on him. Looks like it's looks like it was 57, Brendan Bossy there. He's got 16 tackles so far this season. He's part of that big offensive line with Ray F. F. Sarmanish, who is the leading defensive tackler for the Cadets of 42. And next to Bossy is Cumbie. And we're going to see third down. Kramer's going to go underneath center. He's got Real in the backfield. And he's got Smith, Corey Jackson, and Tim Marion as his wide receivers. Checking the play at the line. Harmon is, at, is in at tight end. We're going to see what the cadets can bring. Kramer, it's a quick drop back. A little throw out there to Smith, and he'll be in the end zone for the touchdown. A beautiful five-yard pass for the touchdown for Jimmy Smith. Cardinals now lead 6-0. And the Oneida to Oneida connection strikes again, picking up right where they left off last week against Brockport. Kramer getting the snap, looking directly to his left, and quickly snaps it off to Jimmy Smith on the left near sideline. He picks up a block from Tim Marion out there, puts his head down, and bowls into the end zone for an early 6-0 lead. 
Chris Pieri will take the extra point and he will nail it. He was perfect last week. He's had a, he had a little bit of problems earlier in the season with converting extra points and he also had a little bit of problems getting field goals as well. But he's really been dialing it in these past two weeks. And now it's seven nothing with 13.34 left here in the first quarter. Cardinals on top. You know, really a worst case scenario there for, uh, for Norwich, they really had trouble on offense. It was noticeable. Andy Holtz does not look comfortable uh, in his his, his uh, first start here. The 6'5 junior had two passes batted down right away, and a third down they ran it. Not much doing there. And then on the punt, a low snap, one hop to the punter. He trying to get go down and get it, put his knee down, and that that started the Fisher offense uh, deep into cadet territory. That's not a good recipe. Uh, for success if you're the Norwich Cadets. Yeah, definitely for this team. They pretty much laid down, and again, you're going to Holtz. Remember, he hasn't had that much play. He's only had 37 pass attempts, but he really came out as a lame duck in that first possession as Tater's about to kick it right back off again to Wild and Darnell Jackson back deep. Ball's a little bit shorter, caught about the 20 there by Jackson. Jackson gets up to about the 32, 35 before he's finally taken down by a host of Cardinals defenders. Looked like Episcopal was the one who came in on that tackle. And then we will see the Cadets take their second offensive possession of the game. Looks like that short kick might have got caught up in the wind a little bit. Landed a little shorter than usual for Ricky Taylor, about the 20 yard line and Jackson did well to gain about 15 yards after the, after the return and starting his offense out with a better field position than last drive. First and 10 from the 35, again from the shotgun. He's got three wide receivers clustered on the near side. We're gonna see what Holtz can bring into this time. Here he comes, he's gonna drop back and he's gonna throw and it's tipped and it's intercepted by Pollock. Pollock's out of the 10, five, touchdown. And before you know it, the Cardinals are now up 13 and nothing. And actually, correct, and that was actually Tim O'Connor, the backup quarterback for Holtz. His first passing attempt is an interception for a touchdown for Dan Pollock, and Grani Stadium has erupted in cheers. So, one, first time around, Pollock knotted it down. The second time around, he knocked it up in the air and took it himself. Took possession at about the 30-yard line or so, and was all the way, all by himself, into the end zone. So, a tough day for the Norwich Cadet quarterbacks. They tried... Try bringing in Timmy O'Connor, a little guy at 5'7", number 14. Obviously, Andy Holtz wasn't working too well on the first drive, so they tried O'Connor on the second, and an even worse result uh, for the Cadets. And right away, Fisher jumping on Norwich here in the first quarter. Fury going for a two for two. The kick is up, and it is good, dead on. Fury really has, again, dialed it in. He is now nailing these extra points, which is really solid for Fisher special teams. Before the Norwich uh, fans can even get settled in here, their team is down 14 nothing, with 13 minutes and change still remaining in this first quarter. St. John Fisher making uh, no bones about it here. They want to get up on Norwich early and really put them away. Uh, not unlike the results that have been the last few years here, dominating performances year in and year out uh, from Fisher to Norwich. And actually this will be the last meeting between Fisher and Norwich as a conference game. Norwich is leaving the umpire conference as a football team. Coach um, Shaw McIntyre just definitely doesn't want to see his last home, uh, last away matchup against Fisher begin like this and, hold, and, sit and, end, and ultimately end up like this. 14-0 again, the score with 13-18 left in the first quarter. It'll be uh, interesting to see who's going to come back out for this third series at quarterback uh, for the Cadets. Obviously, two unsuccessful performances in the first two drives. Here's the kick by Tater. This one a little bit better, not getting caught up into the wind. It'll be received at about the 16, again by Darnell Jackson. He's got a little bit, he's got some holes up to the 35, and he gets to about the 36 yard line. And again, we will see which quarterback we'll see. It, it, it has been uh, worked out this year by the cadets that they were alternating quarterbacks in between drives because they did not know which quarterback they was gonna be their starter. The last possession, the one that was just ended on the first play, the interception by Dan Pollock for the touchdown was Tim O'Connor. And who do we got here? It looks like it's O'Connor again. Holtz was given the bench probably because of the way that his first series came out. Two passes which were less than desire. They were passes that easily could have 
been broken up or intercepted. Not much there. As we see Darnell Jackson step away from being a, a, a running back to a wide receiver. Four wide receivers now for the Cadets. O'Connor's going to keep the ball, and he's going to run. He gets to about the 40 before he's taken down by a host of Fisher defenders. He gets about a solid five-yard pickup on that one. And a couple of flags coming in late towards the end of the hit there. Could be a face mask. And the call will be, yes, it'll be a face mask going against the Fishers. Going against Fisher, it depends on what kind of face mask it is. We'll decide how many yards. Appears to only be five yards. No personal foul indicator was made by the head referee. And they'll move it on downfield. Five yards will be good enough for the first down after some success, unsuccessful pass attempts uh, by uh, the cadets through the air. They're really going to try to go through the ground now, and I can't blame them. A couple dangerous throws made by both quarterbacks has pretty much put uh, their team down 14-0 in a big hole here early. Shotgun position again, three wide receivers. Sean McIntyre will take the first down, but he hopes that his cadets will get some passing ones. He's going to get the handoff there to, to looks like Marziotti. He gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and it looks so. He might have lost an inch or two. But that'll bring up second and 11 in their marking it. You know, the, the problem with this offense, you know, they, they've switched to the spread offense and try to open things up more, but the problem is they're so predictable. You know, all their pass plays are, are three-step drops. They're quick hitters. So if you get your hands up in the air quickly on a defensive line, you can really take those plays away, especially since, the, since Tim O'Connor is only 5'7". O'Connor again from the shotgun. Right to the left of him is Darnell Jackson. <clears throat> Second and 11, 12 11 left here in the first quarter. High snap there by O'Connor. He throws out, and it's uh, intended there for number 18, Jordan Earl. But he's hit immediately by the All American, Steve Stepnick, who again is the Fisher career leader in, in interceptions. He had a beautiful one last week there, John. Like I said, the predictability of this offense, all the corners. And the defensive backs are playing right up on those cadet receivers, and why not? Because they're really not looking to go downfield. They don't throw a lot of vertical passes, so they're going to bump you right to the line of scrimmage and really try to make a break on those short ins and out patterns and those slants as well. Earl in motion against shotgun position. Four wide receivers, Jackson to the left of him. Third and 11, O'Connor drops back. He throws, and no, he isn't. He's being held up there by a couple Fisher defenders, and he will be sacked for what looks like about a loss of five or six yards. I'll bring about fourth and 16. It looked like it was. Derek Melnick there blitzing up the middle. Uh, got delayed at first line of scrimmage. O'Connor couldn't find anyone downfield. Tried to run with it, but it was too late as he got in the grasp of big number 54, Derek Melnick. And he brought him down with the help of some other defenders. That's his fourth sack of the, of the day. Kelly will punt it. It will be returned there by Marion at the 20. He cuts up field to about the 40, and he will be taken down at about the 42. And that is where the Cardinals will start up their offense once again. They had an easy drive the first time they got it when the snap to Kelly was too low. It low, in fact, that it hit the ground, and the referees waved it dead at about the 15, which easily set up that 10-yard that ten yard Jimmy Smith touchdown reception. So a better snap to Kelly, and he gets a line drive kick away, and Marion, with a nice return, gives Fisher good field possession again. Not as good as last drive, but still pretty solid. Shotgun position for the Cardinals. Two running backs. Kramer throws, and he gets Marion about the 50, and he'll be taken down there, gain of about six on the play. Kramer's had a fantastic season so far. He's 85 of 130, and he completes his second, actually his, uh, his second pass of three attempts today. Kramer's got a, a 1,189 yards, 16 touchdowns, and five interceptions. A little bit higher than usual as he goes underneath center. We're going to be seeing Dan Rieger and Chris Harmon set up as twin tight end systems. Marion in the near side, Jimmy Smith to the far side. And Kramer's going to hand it off to Hanson, and Hanson is head to a loot tackle there, but he still loses a couple yards in his second rushing attempt there. Fisher trying to run the stretch handoff on the left side to Hanson, but Corbett was right there, read the play nicely, penetrated immediately, and got his hands on Hanson for a loss of about one, almost two yards on the play. It'll bring up third down for Fisher. Jake Corbett was the, was the cadet who had the takedown. He had a beautiful play breaking right through that offensive line on the left side. 
which is Brendan Fortune and Ben Musel's opportunity to third and five again. 10:08 remaining. Cardinals lead 14 to nothing. Kramer from the shotgun. There's no one. There's no one behind him. He's going to drop back. Here comes a rush, but he throws. It's completion there to Tim Marion, and he'll get to about the 36-yard line, and that'll be a first down for the Cardinals. Fisher had five wide receivers in that pattern, and they left. Uh, they left uh, Kramer a little subject to pressure. And pressure was coming from both sides, but pressure got rid of the ball, excuse me, Kramer got rid of the ball quickly over the middle, Tim Marion to pick up the first down. Again, first down and 10 from the 36 for the Cardinals. Four wide receivers set this time for the Cardinals, and the, there's a whistle blown by the referees. I'll talk it over to about the 40 yard line. And uh, no. Almost. Not much to talk about there. Looks like everything's A-OK. -okay. Just a friendly reminder maybe, Seth. Uh, <laughs> no indication was made by the head referee. Well, it's nice to see that the referees and uh, are, are still friends on that play. Shotgun position for Kramer. He drops back. He's going to throw. He's got a reception, a reception over there to Corey Jackson. He gets to about the 28. A solid pick of about, four, about six yards there, or seven yards there. There's a lot of room that defensive secondary for Norwich. Uh, looks like Kramer's got a lot of time and a lot of space and a lot of areas to throw to. It's kind of pick your, pick your poison here right now. Kramer's going to go underneath center for this one. He's got Jimmy Smith on the near side, Tim Marion on the far side. And in the backfield is Hanson, and he's going to hand it off to Hanson. He's going to get the first down to about the 20, 21 as he's taken down there. A tackle made by Brendan Reccia. He's got 30 tackles, one of the top players from the secondary, one interception so far this year. Reccia might have uh, stayed a touchdown there as Hansen had busted it out to the outside, had one more man to beat to get to the sideline, really just get a couple more yards before it gets in the end zone as Fisher is uh, pressuring them deep in Norwich territory. Solid work there by the left side of Brendan Fortune, the All-American, and Ben Musel. A guy who's getting his first career starts here this season. Kramer drops back and throwing. He gets her complete out to the 15 to Tim Marion. Again, another solid five-yard pickup for the Cardinals with 8.25 remaining. They're still up by two scores here. A couple of, couple of the balls that left Kramer's hand have been a bit wobbly but effective. Uh, nonetheless, you know, a lot, a lot of people like to see beautiful, pretty spirals each, each time. But if you get the ball there, it doesn't matter. Uh, Terry Bradshaw won a bunch of quarterbacks not throwing perfect spirals, and he'll be the first to tell you that. Kramer's got two wide receivers to the far side, Smith and Marion. Hanson's still in the backfield. He's going to hand it off to Hanson. He's going to get into a little bit of contact, but he'll break through to about the 12-yard line, or actually the 11-yard line, so they'll mark it. And it looks like it'll be a, short, a third and short. Looks like Hanson will be only about a half a yard away from the first down. Hanson was hit immediately at the line of scrimmage there. But it looked like the nose tackle, Brendan Fowler, hit him right away. But Hanson did well to bounce off and get a couple extra yards to make it third and short. They're going to make it a third and two, actually, from the 12. It looked like he got to about 11, but they're marking at the 12. Kramer's going to throw immediately out to Smith, but it's a little too far in front. As a second incompletion for Kramer today, and they'll bring out the kicking team. And kicking the field goal will be Chris Pieri. John, I know you and I have seen uh, an alternate between Chris Pieri and Kyle Piccarelli, a guy who hadn't kicked until since 2005. Yeah, Piccarelli's uh, missed, missed an important field goal in the Hartwick game that would have uh, eventually had that game tied at the end. And uh, he's... he's He's uh, done well in practice, well enough to get a couple of looks in the game, but they'll go back to Pierre now as he had a lot of success last year. And, and ever since last week, he really seems to be kicking the ball beautifully as that one goes up and in. And he's going to kick in. it well from 29 yards out. He goes right down the middle, and it's now 17 to nothing. Cardinals with 7-16 remaining here in the first quarter. And again, John, I mean, we've seen... We've seen Holtz play one series that didn't work out too well, and now we've seen o uh, Tim O'Connor, who hadn't started, who hasn't played quarterback at all so far this year, in his first two possessions haven't been so stellar. You, know, you got Holtz; he's a big, bigger kid at six five. Looks like he could be a very capable quarterback. Uh, he appears to have the tools. You know, a good strong arm. He's throwing some tight spirals when he gets it out, but uh, I think the problem with him is his decision making ability, and he's still he is a junior. But he is the third string quarterback, and then, you know, probably the third string quarterback for a reason. The first string quarterback is injured, second string, who played uh, pretty well 
last week in relief uh, had a family commitment. So these two quarterbacks being put in tough situations and really had to, to come through uh, with a lot of adversity here. And they've got a long way to go, already being down 17-0 in this first quarter. And here is Tater's kick. It's a little bit shorter now. It'll be caught at about the 16 by Darnell Jackson. He's been returning them all so far today, and he gets to about the 35 before he's finally wrapped up by Brand uh, Brandon Carl Brad Carlton. We've seen a little bit of him on the special teams, and he also had a pretty good run last week there against Brockport. Yeah, got a, got a look with the first string offense. You know, they've been running Hanson and Real all day long pretty successfully, and all of a sudden they bring in uh, Carlton, and he just burst with uh, some speed straight up the center of the field and got into the end zone. So a little change of pace uh, worked for the Fisher offense last week, and this week Carlton makes a nice play on special teams. Well, John, you're getting your wish. They're going to have Andy Holtz come in. Again, this this alternating quarterback package from the shotgun position. You're going to hand it off to Darnell Jackson, who goes to the outside to the 40-yard line before he's taken down. Gain of about five on that play. You know, and to be honest, I was a little surprised that uh, the cadets came out passing the way they did. You got an inexperienced uh, quarterback, third-string quarterback at that. You come out and you throw in the first two plays of the game. I don't understand. It established the run first. I know, calm your team down. They're probably a little excited, probably a little nervous. This is the eighth-ranked team in the nation. And they should have no problem with Darnell Jackson. He usually averages around 5.6 yards a carry. He's one of their top offensive performers. He's also got more touchdowns in the receiving core altogether. Again, Holtz is going to drop back. He's going to complete this one out to George Wiggum, and he's going to get the first down, knocked out of, knocked out of bounds at around the 48-yard line. They're just on, just in, just about to encroach in the Cardinals' territory with about 6:29 remaining in the first quarter. So Holtz makes a good decision there. Looks downfield, ends up checking down to Wiggum on the far sideline. Good enough for the first down, and for the first time today, we're uh, starting to see this Norwich offense move uh, with Andy Holtz at the helm. Well, they go first with the run play, then with the pass play. They got a new, fresh set of downs, and you see Holtz. Roll out, throw, and it is incomplete. Can't really tell who the intended receiver was. It looked like it was either Valenzi, the wide receiver, trying to get that one, but it was a little too short, and it looks like it was a little bit of ill communication there, John. Oh, I don't know about that. Was, I think the Fisher just had the right blitz called on that play. It was a play action. Holtz faked the handoff, was going to roll to his right, but on that right side, uh, Fisher, Fisher, Steve Flagler was blitzing, and uh, Holtz, evades the pressure and throws it away very dangerously, kind of rec recklessly throwing it across the middle. Three, three wide receivers, and it's a completion out there to George Wiggum to about the 48 of the Fisher side of the field. And that'll get him about a, that'll get him a good third and long. It should be about third and I should think about seven with 6-11 as the clock is running. It's uh, pretty obvious what Fisher wants to do to these inexperienced quarterbacks. He has to put some pressure on them, try to force some more mistakes. Two plays in a row. They had two blitzers coming off the left side to really, excuse me, to really get in Holt's face and try to force them to make a mistake. Well, we'll see what Holtz can do on his second third down attempt. Again, it's going to be another third and long. He's got three wide receivers, two to the near side, one to the far side. He's going to be a little bit of pressure, and it's a completion. No, it looks like it is in loose ball and knocked down the antenna receiver. Looked like it was E.J. Flanagan. It, wait, it was an interception there, John? It was, and uh, Holtz threw it into some traffic there. Well defended by the Cardinals. Ball batted around a few times and finally brought in by the freshman. It looked like maybe Matt Stransky. Second down and eight, three wide receivers again. Kramer's going to fake this one. He's going to throw it over to, over to Harmon on the near side. And he's going to be taken down at about the 49-yard line. That's going to be good enough for Fisher first down with 4.54 remaining in the first quarter. Cardinals still up 17, nothing with that. The Cardinals and Kramer, you know, especially, they run that play action so well, so deceptive, you know. And the problem is you have to respect the run with these two great running backs, so their play action becomes all the more effective uh, when they run it in, a, in, a, excuse me, in long situations or any situation in the game. Smith in motion of uh, Kramer from under center. He's going to complete it out to the near side, near the sideline to Marion. He'll get to the 45 of the cadets' side of the ball. That'll be setting up a nice little second and four for the Cardinals. So Fisher taking a, a play out of the cadet playbook there. Quick three-step drop. Kramer looks right to his left, and a little out pattern finds Marion. 
uh, for a good first down gain. Essentially, the Cardinals are saying, hey, what you can do, we can actually do better with the way the scoreboard has been. Again, three wide receivers, Kramer under center, real in the backfield. He's going to hand it off the real. Real is going to try to break through a hole that closes up real quickly, but he still gets three yards, so it should bring up a third and one at the Cadets 42. Nice play there by the outside linebacker, Clay Campbell. James Real, you know, almost got in that second level, which could have been dangerous. But uh, Cam Campbell d tackled him before he could do so. Uh, about a yard shy of the first down on third down. We're going to see a little bit more of a power set. You got uh, Tebow, the offensive lineman, lining up as a fullback, and Chris Hartman in the backfield. But the guy who looks like he's going to get the ball is James Real, and he's going to get it. He got tripped up, but he looks like he's getting to about the 41. It looks like he'll have enough for the first down. John, we've been seeing that the past couple of weeks, lining up an offensive lineman, Tebow, as a fullback, along with Chris Harmon, the solid, strong uh, tight end, as the Cardinals will get the first down. I've been meaning to ask offensive coordinator Dave Parks what they call that offensive set. I'm guessing something along the lines of, of big or massive or power or something. But uh, Debo comes in in that power back spot with Harmon usually in the fullback spot and a tailback deep, and it's uh, – it's proven to be pretty successful in the goal line in short yardage situations. Without a doubt, John, it's huge. Again, Kramer going from shotgun position. He's got four wide receivers, but he's going to give it to Real. Again, Real's going to bust up to the 30. He tries to stiff over a guy, and he gets taken down at about the 24-yard line. A huge pickup for James Real, uh, but it's coming back, though. Flag on the field, and it'll be a hold against that Fisher offensive line. Yeah, that's too bad. That was a nice run there by the senior James Real. Uh, showed a lot of good vision on that play. Uh, cut it upfield, really busted in the inside and back to the outside, which you want your running backs to do. Find the hole on the inside, get to the outside, and use your speed. And that's what Real tried to do on that play, but unfortunately, it's going to come back on a holding play. That's a huge loss for Fisher there. They usually average about 34.7 yards a game in terms of penalty. I'm pretty sure they lost almost that amount on that play. A huge run. They're going to spot the ball at about the 47. It's going to be, again, first down. Kramer going for shotgun. Four wide receivers. He's going to fake the handoff there to Real, but he's going to run with it and take it to about the 40-yard line. He gets right back to – he gets actually a yard in front of the original line of scrimmage of this of that possession there. Kramer pumped once, uh, actually – Faked the handoff, pumped once, couldn't find anybody downfield and got out of dodge in a hurry there as uh, the defensive ends were bearing down on him, ran straight up the field, good for about a seven or eight yard gain. Second and nine, he's got three wide receivers to the far side, Tim Marion on the near side, but he's going to hand it off there to James Rio. He's going to cut to the far side to about the 35, and he gets the first down and knocked out at about the 27 yard line. Now it'll be good enough for Fisher first down with 2.14 left in the first quarter. You know, a beautiful run there by the experienced senior James Real. Uh, saw there was nothing inside, was able to bounce off one defender and beat another to the outside and get up that far sideline and get to that pylon line to get that first down. And it got picked up a nice block there by another senior, Corey Jackson, number 18, uh, taking care of one of the defensive backs about the 25 yard line. Still going four wide receivers. Uh, Kramer will be in shotgun position with, again, this is Reels possession. It's a high snap and it goes over Kramer's head. Kramer picks up the ball. Here comes three cadet defenders and he's gonna throw it away. Smart play there by Rob Kramer. It was a high snap there by the backup center, Wood. However, they were able to avoid a loss of possession, or rather a loss of huge yardage there. That ball went back to almost about midfield. Kramer and, decided to throw it away. And a smart play by Kramer there. And having gone, having gone to some of Fisher's practices this year, uh, we know that uh, you know Wood is a good blocker, both through the run and the pass. But some of the problems he's had is with that shotgun snap. It's either low or high. Uh, we've seen pretty good snaps throughout the day today, but that one was well over the head of Kramer. Second and 10, Kramer is under center. He's going to hand this one off to Real. Real is going to bust through and get to about the 24-yard line. Pickup of about three on that one. She'll be third and about seven. Stretch handoff there to the left side to Real. And it looks like Rieger had Jason Springer to block, and Springer made a fantastic play to get off Rieger's block on that left side and make a nice play a couple, couple yards down the field on James Real. Rieger and Harmon are going to come out. We're going to see a lot of speed. Four wide receivers, Josiah Smith, Jimmy Smith, Tim Marion, and 
Uh, Corey Jackson, and now James Real will set up on the near side. Five wide receivers, Kramer from the shotgun, and we're going to see a little bit of blitz here from the linebacking core. Kramer's going to roll out to the near side. He gets a, somebody gets a hand on, but he's still up on his feet. He goes out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. There's a flag. It might be a late hit because Kramer was well out of bounds. You know, we said it once, we'll say it a hundred times. You look at Rob Kramer, you could, you wouldn't think he could run from point A to point B, but that time he did well. And I think uh, one of the defensive keys for Norwich that we've seen thus far, every time they get that five wide receiver look from Fisher, they're gonna come with a blitz because they don't have enough guys in protection to really protect Kramer. And the penalty is against the Cadets. It's gonna be a late hit. It's a personal foul penalty. So that's gonna draw them halfway to the to the goal line, they're going to mark the ball at about the six yard line. And again, Kramer was amazing the fact that he actually had a defender pretty much clipping at his heels and he's able to break through yeah. it and get the first down. And, and like a solid I, Kramer play. Like I was saying, that's what they did. They came with the pressure. Kramer did well to elude it and get up that near sideline for some good yards and got hit at the end of the play for some more yards on the personal foul. Rieger and Harmon are back in. We're going to see a handoff to Real. He's going to get a little help from his friends, Rieger and Harmon, with the block, and he's going to get to about the two-yard line. And that'll be second and goal with about 104 remaining in this first quarter. Clock will be rolling 17 to nothing. Cardinals lead. If you just joined us, Cardinals had a huge, huge play, huge plays at the at the sake of the cadets. A blown pelt marked the ball at the 15. Kramer was able to capitalize that with a Jimmy Smith touchdown. And later an interception by Dan Pollock, which he returned for a touchdown, made it 14-0. Then a later 29-yard field goal, as we will see. Second in goal from the three. Kramer underneath center. He's got Harmon in real in the backfield. A little bit of a mi misplay there. The ball is loose. Could the cadets have gotten it? Kramer tripped. He was trying to hand it off to Real. He bumped into Harmon. And the cadets recover the fumble. And that is a huge turnaround now for the cadets. But they will be backed up in their own territory. It looks like it will be marked at around the six-yard line their own six yard line and we'll see what it looks like. It, it, we're gonna see, first off we have to see which quarterback they're gonna come out with. It's either gonna be Holtz or it looks like Connor. Holt, looks like Holtz is out there. You know, Kramer did well to avoid one big turnover on that, that high snap, but on the second time got his feet tangled up with an offensive lineman trip, try to get the reel, to get the ball to reel on the handoff and just couldn't do it. Holtz is lined up just a few feet away from his golden goal line, but he's going to give it off to Darnell Jackson. Jackson's not really going to get much there. Like I was saying, uh, Kramer appeared to get his foot stepped on, trying to get out from underneath center. Still tried to get the hand off too real. But seemed to bounce off his chest and bounce around a few times under there, and there was a big pile up, and uh, Norwich came away with it, so avoiding... Uh, Avoiding yet another touchdown or even a field goal uh, towards the end of that first quarter. Correction, that was actually Marziotti with a carry, and that will do it for the first quarter. The, the score is 17-0. Is, uh, the Cardinals lead right now, and we're going to take a short break for a commercial break. You're listening to Cardinals football on the Fisher Broadcasting Network. Come on! This way! score and seven years ago think history is a little scary then log on to loc.gov and see how much fun it can be the library of congress at loc.gov all right and welcome back here at crowny stadium this is st john fisher college football we're going to see a second and nine here at the start of the second quarter we're going to see what andy holes can do here on this one it looks like there's a little bit of creeping of a blitz by the by the linebacking core well, it's a throw down. Hey, he's going to he's going to give it off to actually Darnell Jackson, and he is actually going to be taken back to about the five yard line. That is actually going to be a loss of a couple yards. Darnell Jackson found a wall at about the four yard line. That wall's name is Matt Beckton, big number ninety nine. Jackson run ran right straight into his chest, bounced backward, and Anthony Kuchik came in and finished him off and tackled him into the end zone. But his forward progress uh, was at about the four yard line. Third and 11 now for the Cadets. Norwich really needs his three wide receivers set. Darnell Jackson is, is lined up at running back. From the shotgun, Holtz dropping back. He's in his own end, so he's going to complete the pass out there. 
to looks like Flanagan. He's going to get taken down at about the, looks like the 11-yard line. It will be short, however, of the first down. It will bring up a fourth and fourth and short, about fourth and five, it looks like. Holt starting to look more comfortable at the quarterback spot. That time found Flanagan over the middle. Flanagan trying to make a couple men miss out there, but some solid open field tackling by Micah Norton and company brought him down short of the first down. And we're going to see Kelly hopefully try to get a punt off. His first one was actually down. The snaps he's doing is pretty good. He's going to get a solid kick. It's going to be tailing over to the near side. Jimmy Smith going after it. He didn't fair catch it at the 50, but he'll be taking down there. Terrell Ahmed actually ran into him. <laughs> Uh, Didn't realize where he was on that field. Could have been a halo infraction on Terrell Ahmed. The only problem is uh, they're both wearing red jerseys. <laughs> so uh, Jimmy Smith uh, living dangerously at about the 49-yard line, his own 49-yard line. A good high kick from Kelly. Smith did well to bring it in despite the contact from Ahmed and uh, had about a two-yard return as he was brought down immediately by a cadet. Well, we're going to see what Kramer's going to do. He's got the three wide receivers set. He's going to go underneath center. Uh, underneath center. Hanson will be his running back, and he's going to hand it right off to him. Hanson's going to bust right through. He's going to go right into that pile to about the 45, a pickup of four on the play. The ball was marked at the 49. It will be a second and six for the Cardinals. Nice offensive push there from the offensive line. Uh, looking at the offensive line, I noticed the switch there. Uh, ben Musel is on the sideline now as Alex Port has taken over at left guard. Uh, I'm not sure if Ben Musel uh, might have tweaked something, but he's sitting on the offensive bench here on the near sideline, and well, Alex Port has taken over his duty. Well, Port has done well. I mean, he's seen plenty of action later in games, and you'll get to see what it's all about right now. As Smith goes in motion to the near side. Kramer drops back, and he's going to go right to Smith. That's that Oneida connection about the 40, still on his feet, and wrapped up at around the 35-yard line. That'll be good enough for a Cardinal first down as they lead 17-0 with 12.41 left in the second quarter. I tell you what, Jimmy Smith is something else. Caught that ball on the near sideline, immediately making one man miss. Appeared to be with a sure tackle on the far, on the, excuse me, on the near sideline here. Uh, made one guy miss and eventually got tackled by a couple of cadets. But it's always interesting when Jimmy Smith has the ball in his hands, Seth. And Smith will be again in motion. He's going from near side to far side. Three wide receivers. Kramer's going to drop back. This one, he's going to go to Tim Marion. Tim Marion oh. gets the reception about the 25. Then he gets taken down. He almost broke free, but he gets marked. He's gets taken down. Ball marked at the 17 yard line. Again, another Cardinal first down. The junior, Tim Marion, about a shoestring away from a touchdown there as Brandon, excuse me, Brendan Recchia, the senior, the 5'10 safety, made a nice play as a. Marion caught the slam pass, well thrown by Kramer. Almost busted through the secondary there, but a nice play made by Recchia. Again, Recchia, one of the top tacklers for that offense, for that defense. And Kramer's going to do that fake rollout to his right. And oh. pass was intended for the All-American Chris Harmon. But Harmon kind of lost his footing. He was backpedaling, and he hit it at a weird angle, fell down. Incomplete pass, second and 10 from the 17 now for the Cardinals. Was not the most accurate throw there by the senior Rob Kramer. They had everybody fooled on that excuse me, on that cadet defense with that play action pass. Faked the hand out to the left side. A good fake by Kramer, rolled to his right. Actually beat, beat and contain on that other side and had Harmon wide open, but couldn't find him. Kramer's going to hand it off for second and 10 to Hanson. Hanson gets about, looks like, three yards on that one. Actually, it looks like they're marking more close to the 16th, so it's a two-yard pickup. It'll bring up a third and eight for the Cardinals. And we're going to see the tight end, Harmon, come out. Four wide receivers set, looks like, as Phil Galletto, also a senior, going to be stepping out onto the field. Galletto's got some pretty amazing speed, and he's got some pretty sure hands. It really shows how deep that wide receiving core is for the Cardinals there, John. They're deep in pretty much all facets of the game in offense. Third and eight, shocking position for Kramer. He's going to get the snap, and it's a good one. He's going to throw it out to Jackson. This one's going to be short of the first down, and he gets taken down around the 10. They need to get to the seven-yard line to get first and goal, and they're going to be a little bit short there, so we're going to see Chris Pieri come out for another field goal attempt. Nice coverage on the edges there by the cadets. Uh, Kramer was looking for Smith. And or Marion could not find them. Galetto was well outside there. So he checked it down to Corey Jackson, who broke off his pattern towards the middle of the field there. It was wide open, but short of the first down. 
Should be about a 30-yard attempt. It looks like as Pierre is going to line himself up at the 20. It's a good hold. The kick is a little wobbly, but it's through, though. Fury is two for two today. He only missed one uh, field goal attempt last week early in the first quarter. It's Chris Pieri is coming back to the form he was last year for the special teams. Giving the Cardinals a 20 to nothing lead here with 10.39 left in the, fir in, the, in the first half. So some good third down defense from the cadets is uh, saving them to a cer certain extent right now down by 20 points here in the first half, but could be, it could be upwards of 35 points. Well, now, John, the thing is, I mean, we've seen we've seen both the quarterbacks that they said they were, that uh, the cadets that Norwich said they were going to use Holtz and O'Connor. However, Holtz has been having the ball for the last two possessions. You think they're going to keep? They're going to stick with his guns? You know, I really think that they will. He's uh, he's appeared to calm down a little bit. Uh, realizing the situation, realizing that he's got to take care of the ball because if he continues to turn the ball over and make poor decisions, he's going to put his team in a bigger and bigger hole. And he just doesn't want to do that. Uh, maybe try to look down the field a little bit here, take a chance. Uh, Fisher's looking for the short play, and they've been predictable thus far. So really maybe try to stretch the field a little bit with Wiggum or Flanagan uh, down the field with a vertical pass. And we're going to see Pieri make another kick. This one is really short. The ball is going actually going to hit about the 35. The ball is loose. And it's actually a mad scramble for it because the cadet player did touch it. The referees are going in to the, the check out the pile. I don't know who has that ball set. It's I think it's for anybody's ball, Squirted straight essentially. up in the air. And uh, Norwich ends up recovering. But that's a design play by the special teams. That's, uh, it's almost it's like a, an onside, thick, onside kick down the field. Uh, the design is that Tater gets under it a lot, puts a lot of backspin on it in the ball rotation. So when it lands, it takes a bounce back towards the Fisher players uh, running down the field, and it almost worked out for them and caught the cadets uh, by surprise. But the special teams there for Norwich did well to recover. It'll still be Holtz. He's got Valenzi on the near side. He's got, looks like he's got Flanagan on the far side along with Wiggum. And the drop back, he's going to throw. It's going to be complete out there to, to Valenzi. He's going to be taken down at about the 41. That's a good, solid pickup of six yards, a second and four coming up for Norwich. And they're going to really need to keep moving this ball, John, being down by essentially three scores. Maranto, the senior, immediately tackled Valenzi. As Holt did well to get it out of his hands with pressure bearing down him from Sean Trapper and the other defensive end, Dan Pollock. Jordan Earl comes in for Norwich. He'll be on the near side, lined up with Valenzi. Here comes a rush. Becton almost got a chance on him, but no oh. good. In fact, the ball almost could have been intercepted by Steve Stepnick, but it was incomplete. It'll be third and four. I thought I saw a holding penalty there. That's what Matt Becton's making his case right now as he had instant penetration up the middle. Appeared that someone got a hold of his jersey and uh, impeded him from getting at the quarterback, Andy Holtz. Looked like it would have been a sure thing sack. It looked like it looked like it was uh, um, the center, Olaf Francois there, number 51. He was grabbing him right by the shoulder pads, John. So they're going to go Third with the shotgun now. again. Lining up really tight. They're going for the blitz, and they read it well. The handoff was to Darnell Jackson, and he gets dropped for a loss. He's going back to the 37-yard line, and will again be fourth down. And once again, Mr. Kelly will be making his play out here. He'll be here to make a nice little punt. Tim Marion and Jimmy Smith will be back to return this one. That's a nice call there by Coach Fagiano, the defensive coordinator. Brought the run blitz on on third down and worked out well for him. Solid snap there to Kelly. This one's a little bit of a line drive kind of deal. Mary will play it from about the 21. Tries to juke out one of the defenders. He goes to the near side. He breaks one tackle. He's got a little help from his friends as he gets to the 35-yard line. And that'll be the start of the offense for the Cardinals with 9.05 remaining in this first half. Cardinals still up, 20 nothing. Timmy Marion's another guy, you know, when he gets the ball in his hands, interesting things happen. It's always interesting to see what they can do. That time really made something out of nothing. A lot, low line drive kick took a favorable bounce for the cadets. Marion did well to field it, uh, run across the field, cut back, make a couple of men miss, and gain about 15 yards on the return. That was a solid play there by the cadets. They had their, probably one of their best chances of maybe recurving the ball in the turnover. 
As we're going to see both Real and Hanson be out there. There'll be two wide receivers set. Marion and Jimmy Smith will line up on the far side. Kramer from shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Real. Real's going to go to the outside. He's going to swing all the way out there. The door was open for a little bit. He got to about the 39 gain of about four on that play. If this were the NFL, so that might have been an illegal tackle there. Horse collar takedown by number 26, Donovan Brown. Brings him down at about the 39 yard line. Real does well again to bounce to the outside. Use his speed to try to get to that second level. But Flo caught up with him and Donovan brought him down. Second and six, Brown is actually the second uh, defensive leader for the Cadets with 41 tackles and one pick so far this year. Shock in position, Kramer drops back, throws, and he's got Tim Marion again out to the 50. And Marion will be brought down around the 44 yard line of Norwich territory. And once again, Kramer is just threading the needle and just finding every single way to just dissect this, this Norwich defense. This wide receiving core really gives, you know, every secondary they play against pretty much just absolute fits. Uh, so much depth, so much speed, and so much playmaking ability in that, in that receiving core. They're tough to handle. First down and 10 from the 44. Kramer's got two running backs right next to him here in the shotgun position. Smith and Marion at wide receivers. The handoff to Hanson. Hanson will get about a couple yards, second and eight. Beautiful offensive push from the offensive line that time. You know, it looked like he got tackled immediately, but the offensive line did so, such a good job pushing the defensive front backwards that when he was tackled, I mean, he was already two, two yards downfield, so. Offensive line winning the battle up front right now. And that's what that offensive line has been doing pretty much all year. Kramer's going to go underneath center. He's got real in the backfield. He's going to have two tight ends, but he's going to have Smith and again Marion and his wide receivers. Again, stretch handoff there to real. Real gets tripped up and taken down at about the 44. That's going to be loss of the two yards they gained through the Hanson play. And Real once again trying to get to the outside, trying to get uh, to that sideline where speed can become an even bigger factor, but a beautiful play there made by Donovan Brown, number 26, knocked down, uh, knocked one of his feet from out underneath him and did not allow him to get to the outside. They're really going to be needing that, especially with the secondary way they have been creeping them up. We're going to go four wide receivers, Real in the backfield, Kramer at shotgun. We see Galetto come in as that fourth wide receiver. The throw is going to be immediately out to Real. A little screen pass. Real still on his feet to the 40 to the 35. And he is out of bounds. And it looks like the referees will mark it at the 28-yard line. It looked like they were marking it there. Correction, they will mark it at the 35. Real stepped out a little bit before what it looked like he stepped out at. And that will bring up a fourth and one. And let's see what this offense is going to do. Actually, they're going to keep it out. They're going to bring the power in. There's good old Debo there. Big old Debo. Eric Debo, number 76, a big offensive lineman. They got lined up as a fullback position. And the handoff will be to Real. Debo trying to give him help there, but it was no avail. Real cannot make the first down. A turnover on downs. The Cardinals will turn it over. They're 62% so far this year on fourth downs. And now the Cadets kind of dodge a bullet right there with 6.36 remaining in the first half. Cardinals just got straight up beat at the line of scrimmage that play. They had a yard to gain and could not get it. As a nice play there by some of the defensive players on Norwich including uh, number 49 Dan Real came right through the line of scrimmage and brought down Real before he can get to the 35 yard line. And we're going to see Holt still at the helm. He's going from the shotgun position. He's got two wide receivers and two running backs. And the snap is, Holtz is going to roll out to his right. He's going to keep it, but he is just going to be automatically met up by several Fisher players. It looks like coming in on that play was number 41 there for the Cardinals. It's Anthony Kuchit and big Matt Mahani. Uh, Mahani got a little more playing time last year. Now he's, he's in the lineup with the defensive line, uh, getting some more snaps now. And one thing we should mention, uh, no Josh Gottlieb, no juggernaut in the lineup today as uh, Anthony Cucci and Derek Melnick are uh, filling in the inside linebacker spot, uh, particularly Cucci on the inside and Melnick on the outside. Three wide receivers now for Norwich. They got Flanagan, Valenzi, and Wiggum. 
Dropping back and throwing immediately over there to the tight end, Collins, but he can't make the play. He got hit immediately, and he is slow getting up. He's and getting up under his own power at least now, but he got jacked up there, John. And that was number 34, the junior, Matt Driscoll. Uh, had a partially torn ACL and still does, uh, but is able to, to, to play as he has no pain uh, throughout it. He has some options towards the end of the year. He might need surgery, and hopefully it will heal on its own, but he's still got that speed and that big hitting ability from the strong safety spot. And that time he came up and put a good lick on the receiver across the middle. Third and 15 now for the 30 for Norwich. They got four wide receivers. They got three to the far side, one to the near side. High snap there for Holtz. Here comes the rush, but he's going to try to make the play, and it's a little too high there for Jordan Earl, the intended receiver. And once again, it's fourth down, and you know what that means. That means Ryan Kelly's going to have to come out and make another kick for the Cadets. And Holtz, you know, pretty well, pretty well covered downfield by the Cardinals, and Holtz tried to fit one in there. Uh, had some man coverage on the far sideline and safety help over the top, so he really would have had to drop it in a perfect area, but overthrew his intended receiver. Uh, so it's going to bring up fourth down. Kelly gets a solid snap to him. He gets a solid kick on it, too. Returned at about the 32 by Tim Marion once again. Marion busts up through to the 40. He's up to the, he breaks through to midfield and gets taken down at about the 46 yard line. He's in Norwich territory, and let's see if the Cardinals can try to convert this opportunity into some points. Nice return by Tim Marion going straight up the field, north and south. Picked up some good blocks there from his return team, including Jimmy Smith, the other returner. Got out in front for him, made a nice block, and uh, Fisher's going to start off some good field position as they've got Hanson in the backfield here, and Rieger's going to play in the H-back spot as well. With the way that this offense has been playing, as we see Rieger and Harmon line up, as the handoff will be taken there to Hanson, they've been playing fantastically as Hanson will get to about the 42-yard line. Solid pickup of about five yards on that play. Hanson showing good vision on that play. Not much doing outside. Bounces to the outside. Back to the inside and back to the outside again. Showing some good cutting ability for a nice first down gain of about five. Second and six from the 42. Kramer will go underneath center. He's got Harmon and Hanson in the backfield. Hanson once again gets a snap. Trying to push his way past the 40. But he's hit by the wall there. Solid play there by number 49 on the Norwich defense. And that will be Dan Rio who's taking over for Jim Carizzi, who is out with an injury from last week's game against the Ithaca Bombers. No one get confused here. There's two different reels. Dan Reel on defense for the Cadets, and of course James Reel, the running back uh, for St. John Fisher. Two different spellings, R-E-I-L-E -E and R-E-A-L-E. -E. Well, John, I would hope that James Reel wouldn't want to take his own man down with third <laughs> and three with 425 remaining in the half. Kramer from under center drops back and throws. He's got this pass out to the Oneida connection, Jimmy Smith. He'll be taken out at about the 25. He actually dragged two Norwich defenders for five yards. Unbelievable. We saw him take Noah Presley and Brenda Reccia for five yards. You know, Jimmy Smith is not exactly a big, strong guy. In fact, I think he's about like 5'10 there, maybe about 180 being pounds. generous, Seth. He's not the biggest guy, but he's got a big heart. He plays with it each, uh, each game, and you can tell he's playing with so much confidence right now. After a huge week last week, every time he gets the ball in his hands, he thinks he can score. Four minutes left in the half. First and 10 from the 24. Kramer under center, and he's going to do another handoff there to Hanson. Hanson's rolling out. He's going to get to about the 20-yard line, about a solid four-yard pickup. Second and six now for the Cardinals. Clock still rolling with about 3.45 left. They're still up there by 20 points, John. And it looks like Ben Musel, the sophomore starting guards, checking back into the game as Alex Port uh, checks out. Uh, good good fill-in roll there by Alex Port. Uh, held up his end of the bargain nicely at the left guard spot. We've been seeing Musel start. There wasn't really an idea of who was going to play that position, but Port's been doing an A-OK -okay job playing substitute. Second and six from the 20. A little bit of confusion where the ball is. The ball is loose. Did the Cardinals recover it, though? Looks like Kramer, and it looks like also like Wood had it, and they do. Looks like Wood was able to try it to just just drop right on top of that ball. Keep it for the Cardinals. And they'll bring up a third and six from the 20. You know, these are these are really some of the problems Fisher 
you know, wants to avoid in these type of games. Obviously, uh, they're heavily favored against Norwich, but the thing is, uh, these lackadaisical plays, these, these unforced turnovers, if you will, where it's pretty much making mistakes on their own account because they're getting lackadaisical to a certain extent. Those are things they want to avoid. They want to get on top of this team early, put them away, and, you know, get some of the second, third stringers in there to get some experience. A strong set for third and seven. Kramer's going to drop back, though. He's going to throw. He's trying to get to Corey Jackson, oh! and he got him at the goal line. Corey Jackson, touchdown. A 21-yard touchdown pass from Rob Kramer to Corey Jackson, and that should be his first touchdown of the year. What a gorgeous play there as uh, – Jackson somehow pulls in the ball, a bit underthrown by Kramer, but Jackson did well to adjust and beat the defensive back to, to grab that one in for the touchdown on the near sideline here. Uh, went pretty much across the field, did Jackson. Kramer put it up in the air and threw it a bit short, but good enough for a touchdown. And Pierre just adds another total to that 27 to nothing with that extra point. He's three for three today, John. You gotta give credit where credit is due. So nothing lacks today to go about that touchdown pass. There's a nice strike from Kramer to Jackson, one senior to another to put St. John Fisher up 27-0 here in the second quarter. And Fisher really, really putting it on the cadets now, but the only problem is can they eliminate those lackadaisical plays, those unforced turnovers, and really put together uh, 60 quality minutes of football. What? Well, John, the one thing I got to say, though, I, I, it actually comes to shock to me. That is actually Corey Jackson's first touchdown of the season. Who would have thought six games into this one we'd be seeing, or seven games into this, we'd actually see seeing Jackson score. You know, you know one I, of the huge receivers last year. I think not, not to fault Jackson, but I think Marion and, and Smith have played so well that, you know, it's, it's hard to get on the field when you got those two guys. I mean, Jackson started off the year starting, and now it appears that Smith and Marion have played, but they play with so many receivers in the set that it really doesn't matter. Wiggum and Darnell Jackson. It won't be wild this time. Wiggum will be taking over as Tater again does that little design play caught at the 30-yard line by Norwich. And it'll be taken down around the 42. It was number 40 there, Kyle Marziotti, the backup running back, usually the power back for this cadet um, shotgun option offense. Big hit there by Andy Episcopo on special teams. Uh, made a nice play to bring him down at about the 42-yard line. we got 226 remaining in the half, and again, Andy Episco, one of those guys who's about the two deep, he's really been having a stellar year stepping up for the Cardinals. As we got first and 10 from the 42, three wide receivers, two on the near side, one on the far side, and of course we got Darnell Jackson, their leading rusher in the backfield. Threatening bliss, but it'll be... Holtz, Holtz going for the near side intended for Wiggum and he wants a flag for pass interference but he's not going to get one. Solid defense once again by the Cardinals. Wiggum doesn't have much of an argument there. Beautiful coverage given by number 23 Kenny Bostic. Another junior defensive back there was right on top of Wiggum. Got his left arm in front and batted that ball away. Wiggum and Valenzi will be on the near side and on the far side will be EJ Flanagan their top receiver for touchdowns. And they're hoping to get one here. Second down and 10. Holes under pressure a little bit. He again, he overthrows the tender receiver, George Wiggum. Trying to get him around midfield, but no dice there. 217 remaining in the half. Clock will be stopped for this third and 10. The freshman Matt Stransky giving chase on the left side on the blitz. Uh, was giving pressure to Holtz. Holtz had to get rid of it in a hurry and threw it towards the near sideline here. Really nobody was home on that play. And it'll bring up third down. Well, the cadets are hoping to be knocking on the door of a score here, but once again, we're going to see what happens again from the shotgun position. Three wide receivers. Holtz drops back. Here comes a bit of a rush. He's going to have a wide oh. receiver open. Valenzi, but he overthrows him at the 33-yard line. And once again, it's Ryan Kelly time. He's going to have to pump this one away for Norwich. Holtz has got to be upset with himself on that play. Finally had an opportunity uh, to throw the ball downfield vertically, had Valenci wide open across the middle. All he had to do was throw it to number 87. Could not do so. Tried to fit it in there a little too nicely and overthrew his intended receiver and almost was picked off after being tipped by Valenci. Micah Norton almost got a hold of it. 
Kelly's kick goes to the far side. It's going to be rolling from about the 20, the 15, the 10. Going down about the five, Norwich is going to let it die at about the three yard line. A solid kick there by Ryan Kelly. Those are the kind of things he's been wanting all year long. He really needs to, as long as it's a 59 yarder, and he's had nine punts so far this year inside the 20, and chalk up number 10 right there, John. You can't draw that one up any better than that as uh, Kelly hits that punt beautifully. It wasn't a booming kick by any means, but got it end over end so that when it hit the turf, it really kicked up uh, towards the end zone in that direction. And it just kept rolling and rolling. And the cadet uh, gunner men did very well to, to down that ball inside the five yards, far yard, excuse me, five yard line and give the Fisher offense a long way to go here. We got a flag on the field. It looks like it was thrown by the uh, field judge there. It looks like it might be an illegal substitution for the Cardinals. We're gonna see what it is. Ooh, yeah, so from the sideline, so it'll actually be a sideline violation there for the Cardinals. That's going to drop them back a little bit. Cardinals, of course, with upward over 100 uh, players on their roster. I believe all 99 possible numbers on the jerseys are taken, and they're in front of us right here on the near sideline. Some of them must have been creeping outside the box on the field, and the field Joe is saying, hey, you guys should know your limits. Throw the flag out. Let them know how you feel on that one. First and 10 for the Cardinals from about the three yard line. The handoff is gonna go right to Rio. He's gonna go to the far side to about the, he's gonna get past the five yard line. They're gonna mark him about the seven yard line. Nice play there made by Brennan Recchia on that far sideline. Uh, got Rio at about, the, about hip level, took him off stride and really spun him down to the ground for a five yard gain. Rucky has been a huge help in that secondary and also for the entire defense alone for Norwich. He's been making plays left and right. Again, we're going to see a four wide receiver set, Kramer under center, but he's going to hand out the reel. Reel is going to get just eaten up right there at the line. Woo. Jason Springer was the one who came in, the linebacker. He's going to get a beautiful hit there. He just wrapped up reel right by the legs and took care of him. So a loss of a couple that time. It's gonna bring up third down. Fisher pinned back deep in their own end after a nice special teams play by Ryan Kelly and company on the punt. We're underneath a minute here. The Cardinals leading 27, nothing almost near the end of the first half. We're probably just gonna see them try to eat up as much clock as they can because the play clock is on the one to Kramer get it off in time. He realized it got down late so he decided to call the timeout to waste more clock. Not a bad decision there by Kramer. You know, use up as much time as possible in this dangerous situation in your own end. And I take a timeout with about a half second left on the play clock, and they'll they'll take it over again here once after the timeout is over with third and long. And I, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see them keep it on the ground here and keep that clock running. And uh, maybe Norwich will try to call a timeout, stop the clock in their own right, because uh, even with a punt here, they should get pretty good field position with uh, some decent time, a decent amount of time left on the clock. Cardinals are using their first timeout. Norwich has failed to use any of their timeouts so far today, which has been good for their sake. But again, John, I mean, if you are Norwich, I mean, do you really want to try to take a chance of trying to put some points up here at, the, at this stage of the game? Absolutely. I mean, there's no better time than now. You're down 27 points here in the first half. you got to try to make something happen, happen and the sooner the better uh, for the cadets. I wouldn't be surprised if you see them bring some pressure here. And surprisingly, uh, Fisher brings on four wide receivers with a real deep in the backfield. So maybe they are going to try to go for the first down here, even though they are deep in their own end. Through man rush. Looks like they're going to get a blitz from one of the linebackers there. Kramer under pressure, but he's going to keep the ball running to about the 10. Looks like he'll be down around the 12. That should be about a yard short of the first down, it looks like. Or actually, it's going to be real close. Actually, this might actually call for a measurement. Actually, they're going to mark it fourth down, but no call for measurement at all. Uh, they'll bring him on now. It's, it does appear to be close enough to warrant a measurement, and that's what they'll do. This will be really. I mean, this could be huge for the Cardinals if they get the first down, because about 37 seconds left in the half, they will get the first down, and as soon as they set up the sticks, that clock will be running, and the Cardinals will probably just make sure that that Norwich does not call a timeout and just kill it. 
They should have no problem with doing that at all. Good pocket awareness there by Kramer. Went with the pump fake and then tried to throw it vertical downfield. Was well covered by the cadets. Felt the pressure, ran straight at the gut. Good enough for the first down. Clock running first and 10. Kramer's going to hand it off the reel. Reel avoids a tackle. He should have been down five yards back. He gets a couple of those yards. However, he will be dropped for a loss of about three on the play. Timeout taken by Norwich with 25 and a half seconds left. Cardinals still on top, 27-0 as we near almost halftime. Passing gas in the presence of others is not only inappropriate. That is so foul. It can be deadly. Passing gas releases a fog of carbon monoxide. Grandpa. And other poisonous fumes that can contribute to asthma and pneumonia. You're killing us over here. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas, take it outside. A reel to the left of him, his left hand man. Looks like we're going to see again another three man set. A little bit of a blitz coming in from that left side. It tosses out to Mary, and he gets to about the. Well, it looks like he got back to the nine, so no gain. But because Marion was knocked out of bounds, that means the clock is stopped with 20.2 seconds left now for the third and 14. And now, John, you, we, we, you were critical of that timeout now. It actually Not seems really like it, it was a good idea. Not really critical, but, I mean, you're not going to have much time to work with. I mean, it's, it still is third down, and who's to say they won't get a first down here, even though it is third and long. But uh, with Marion going out of bounds, uh, the cadets didn't have to delay the inevitable that time with a timeout. Third and 14, again, four wide receiver sets, three on the near side. Reel's going to slip on over to the right side from the left. Kramer drops back. He'll be in his own end zone, but he's going to step out. Under pressure, he's going to throw the ball. Looks like he's going for Marion. Oh, Marion catches the ball. It's a first down for the Cardinals with 12.3 seconds left. They still have two timeouts, so if they want to go for a score, they can call it. But as soon as those sticks set up, they're going to start that clock, and it will be rolling. And Fisher calls timeout. What a great play there. Uh, Kramer held in the pocket, got some pretty good protection. Eventually was flushed out, rolled to his left, threw one up to uh, Tim Marion, who adjusted well as the ball was underthrown and a bit wobbly, but caught it downfield and uh, caught it kind of falling to the ground at about the 40-yard line. And the Cardinals will take the timeout. It's 27 to nothing here with 12.3 seconds left. Essentially, they got two plays left in them. They could go. They could try to go for the end zone both times, or they could even try to go downfield, maybe set up a Chris Pieri field goal. He is two for two today for field goals, three for three for extra points. And John, I mean. Again, what would you think the Cardinals would want to do here? I mean, not so much maybe pad the score a little more, or that, well, or they you, can just kill the you clock. Want, I mean, they're obviously in a position where, you know, it's not a certainty that they're going to win, but they feel pretty good about their chances. They want to work on these type of situations, these last-minute situations where when you do need a score at this time, you can get it. Kramer drops back. You get a little bit of pressure. He rolls out to the near side. He throws the Jackson down to about near midfield. Jackson will only get there. The ball will be marked, and the play will be called dead at, at the 48 because they have to set up the six at the first down with 1.1 seconds left, and the Cardinals will now use their final timeout. And on that play there, the pass was intended to Corey Jackson, and, and little Jimmy Smith came over and absolutely laid the lumber on Jake Corbett, number 37, and a big uh, reaction from the Fisher bench, bench there and all 99 players in uniform. Uh, as, as Jimmy Smith not only doing it with the ball in his hands, but as a blocker as well. And uh, Jake Corbett knows that better than anyone else, Seth. And Fisher's going to take this time out and set up one last offensive play. This will be pretty much for all the marbles now. We're going to see what they can do here in this last play of the first half. Well, they got the first down on the play. And, you know, that, I, realizing this now, Cadets might have actually given Fisher a little more time on offense by calling that timeout. Exactly. The, play, the, the crucial play of this drive so far was the fact that Tim Marion caught a reception and was knocked out of bounds, stopping the clock. 
about, I believe it was about 25 seconds remaining in this half. And now there's 1.1 seconds left in the first half. Cardinals lead 27 to nothing over the Norwich Cadets right now. Four wide receivers and one running back now. Three on the near side. Kramer drops back. He's getting good protection. He's looking for a man downfield. He's going to toss it up. It's going to be a little short. It could be intercepted. And it was, it was intercepted, but it was immediately dropped there. But it looked like it was Donovan Brown, the, the, full, the free safety there. And that'll do it for the first half of play here at Grani Stadium. The Cardinals lead 27 to nothing. And we'll be back after these messages on the Fisher Broadcasting Network. I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. The work was so hard. It was just going fast, fast, fast. I got kicked out of school, and nobody cared about me, so I don't care. I sort of got messed up into gangs and other stuff. School was very difficult. I was expelled from school. I mean, the one person who really got me to go back into school was my friend Kevin. At my friend's graduation, I'm going to be the loudest one there. Because if you don't have anybody while you're in school, then there's not really a way to get through it. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. tasty treat. Fruits packed with potassium and other nutrients can help keep your heart pumping strong during the game. And they give you energy back so you can take on the next activity. Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Find out more at smallstep.gov. I'm tall enough to reach the light switches. I'm big enough to brush my teeth by myself. I'm the tallest kid in my class. I haven't worn diapers in years. I'm much less likely to vomit at random now. <laughs> my cups don't have lids anymore. Mine either. I'm getting pretty big. But to help me survive a car crash, I still need you to give me a boost. Until they're four foot nine, use a booster seat in the car and don't let them down. My name's Lisa, and in nine years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, and I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. My parents won't believe it could happen to me. serves a sentence with you. All right, and again, we're still here at halftime. The Cardinals leading 27 to nothing here at Grounty Stadium. And going over the scoring summary in the first quarter, it was mainly the, the, what, uh, the problems that Norwich ran to result in scoring problems. After uh, Kelly had a problem fielding the punt and was down at the 15-yard line, the Cardinals struck early with a Kramer 10-yard pass to Jimmy Smith. And then the next possession, Dan Pollock on the first play intercepted a uh, O'Connor pass for a 28-yard interception return. Pieri once again got the kick, the extra point kick for that. And Pieri decided to go for a 29-yard field goal, made that one. And that was it for the first, half, uh, first quarter. In the second quarter, 10:39, uh, into the uh, into the uh, quarter, uh, Peary, or uh, actually 10:39 was actually the with time remaining left of the second quarter. Peary nailed a 27-yard field goal, which made it a 20-0 game. And then Corey Jackson got a 21-yard 
pass from Rob Kramer. And the Peary kick made it a 27 to nothing game. And John, talking about the two quarterbacks here, they're uh, the Norwich Cadets have used two quarterbacks, Andy Holtz and Tim O'Connor, and Holtz has been the main guy doing a lot of the work. You know, they, they traded off series. Uh, Holtz started off. He started, had two balls batted down, immediately did not look a little shaky, not look too good uh, in that first possession. And then Tim O'Connor came out in his very first play from scrimmage. Uh, with him at the helm, he threw an interception to Dan Pollock. Uh, looked quickly to his right side, threw the ball. Pollock batted up straight in the air and caught it as well and scampered 28 yards for the touchdown. Ever since that point, it's really been a, Holtz taking over uh, on the offensive end. It's seemed to calm down a little bit. It has moved the cadet offense uh, to a certain extent, but really has not really threatened uh, to score at all thus far as they're still shut out by this Fisher defense. And uh, speaking of O'Connor, he only had two, he's only played in two possessions. His first pass attempt was an interception, and the next two attempts he made were incomplete, so he's 0 for 2 today in terms of passing. One interception, and he has been sacked once. Holtz, on the other hand, he is 4 for 14. One interception still. The longest pass he made was a 23-yard pass, and but still that has equaled no points whatsoever for Norwich all game long. On the other side of the ball, John, we're talking about a completely different game. Rob Kramer is 17 for 21, 198 yards, two touchdowns. And once again, he's been finding his buddy Jimmy Smith there. Smith right now has three receptions for 36 yards for a touchdown. I mean, what can you really say about that? Yeah, we, we mentioned before, every time he gets the balls in his hand, the ball in his hands, it, it's very interesting because he can bust it at any time or at least make a couple guys look silly. Uh, on, the, on the sideline as he did earlier in the first half. And uh, such a big week last week, and he's really playing with a lot of confidence. And you can tell whenever he gets the balls in his hands, he really does think he can score and go the distance or at the very least make a spectacular play. And speaking about a guy who has a lot of confidence, I actually got to talk with him this past week and talk to him about last week's game against Brockport and even what he was planning on doing this week against Norwich. All right, I'm here with uh, Jimmy Smith, the wide receiver from the football team. He had a big game against Brockport this past weekend. Uh, Jimmy, to start it off, how does it feel to tie a Fisher school record for most touchdowns in a game? Uh, it's really exciting. Offense had a great game. Um, it was a big game for us also because we were coming off of a loss to Hartwick. Our defense played real well, holding them only to seven points. So it was just real exciting all around. Again, coming off that loss to Harwell, you guys come in and just flat out control Brock, Brockport from start to finish from all sides of the ball. Uh, had, did the coaches uh, mention anything about um, like maybe like coming with a different mindset against Norwich, a team that many are predicting that you guys should be able to beat? Um, well, we can't really come in with a different mindset anymore because our goal is to make the playoffs, obviously, and we need to win out to get into the playoffs. So we got to come in real serious to all our games, play them real tough, and make sure we get the victory. All right, and so, I mean, speaking about, you know, coming in and trying to make the playoffs, you know, again, Norwich is a team that last week just got shut, uh, was shut out by Ithaca. Again, I mean, that, uh, Ithaca was a team that you guys were able to contain as well. Uh, for, the, for the offense, uh, what, are the, what is the game plan for you guys this weekend? Um, you know, it's the same game plan every week. Just go out there, work hard. We got to run the ball well, pass the ball well put up enough points, and hopefully the defense is going to shut them down anyway. So just get the victory for us. All right, and speaking about talking about the passing game, uh, I know in the broadcast last week, John and I were referring to uh, you uh, getting hookups from Kramer there as the Oneida connection. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing you probably got to play a decent amount of ball with um, Kramer back in high school. Yeah, uh, my sophomore year he was quarterback, and uh, we ended up doing pretty well that year. I think we had a few touchdowns then too. <laughs> well, I would hope so because, I mean, by the way, it looks like Rob uh, made the transition from college to high school. It seems that he has, like, these, I mean, really solid intangibles, especially the way that he's able to see, you know, you guys' receivers down the field. Did he have uh, hints of that back in uh, the old Oneida high days? Uh, I think he always has seen the field really well, always knows what's going on and uh, gets the ball out there when he needs to. Helps us make the plays. All right, and for, you know, from the offensive standpoint, does the coaching staff, uh, I mean, along with even the receiving core, I mean, I know that's one thing that Fisher has a lot of depth at receiver. Does that kind of help, um, you know, have a lot of chemistry between the receivers and knowing the routes and knowing what Kramer can and can't do? Yeah, we uh, work with the quarterbacks every day in practice, obviously, and uh, all the receivers are pretty comfortable with them. So 
um, we know what we're doing. He knows what we're doing. So it's just pretty easy just going out there doing what we do in practice every day. All right. And with that said, it, you know, it should be a good game this weekend. Hopefully the, the Cardinals will come out with another victory, and we'll, go, we'll be back after this.